Welcome to this tech talk about logging in a poly polyglot environment, in an IT environment at Tractive. My name is Dominic Kurnas, I'm CTO at Tractive, and today's topic will be about logging. What is Tractive? Tractive is a Linz, Austria based startup creating pet safety products. We create a GPS tracker for your dog that you can attach to its collar and track its location in real time. What are challenges that we are facing? With a GPS device in the field, server software, mobile apps, there are quite a lot of challenges that we see today, such as security for the communication between apps, servers, and server and devices, updatability, updating the firmware of the apps, uh, the firmware of the GPS trackers, updating the apps. Firmware updates are done via Bluetooth, via Wi-Fi, via GSM or LT. Also one of the challenges is logging. Many devices in the field, many requests, big server farms in the background create lots of logs out of various software systems. Further uh, more, there are challenges when it comes to availability of systems that need to be in the field 24 seven. That means we have to take care of a zero downtime deployment and make sure that our customers that are around the world always see the latest location of their pets. And also with lots of pets, lots of customers, there's lots of data, uh, scaling the database is another challenge. Today, we would like to focus on the aspect of logging. Why is logging such a big topic? As I already explained, there is various sources. We have apps based on Swift and Kotlin, they have integrated React Native and JavaScript uh, parts in the application. There are backend systems written in Kotlin, in Ruby, JRuby, uh, and Java. Also, the firmware development guys create quite a lot of logs as well. They write their stuff in CC++. And then all the web applications, websites, web shop, written in various web frameworks, also create logs that we want to aggregate on the server side. So how did we solve this challenge? First of all, let me explain what runs in the background. Our attractive ecosystem runs on a Docker Swarm environment in a larger cluster of several servers. So there is various applications like REST APIs. Um, there is endpoints for our GPS trackers that consume the device or IoT devices data and supplementary service that you can uh, think of like a notification service, sending push notifications, other geo uh, location related applications and, and many more. In addition to that, obviously there's quite some infrastructure running, load balancers, caches, MongoDB as our core database, for example. All of those systems generate logs. And on the outside, obviously also some uh, GPS trackers that uh, produce logs over their uh, runtime and send it to our device endpoints. Same holds true for our mobile apps. So how do we aggregate those logs? We opted for the ELK stack or now called Elastic stack. This stack is built upon four main components um, from Elastic and I want to quickly explain those four components. First, we start to the left with the Beats environment. Beats is a set of tools uh, that collects logs from various systems. We are using file beats, as you will see in a second, since we are reading the logs from the files that are generated by our Docker environment. Beats collects those files and forwards them to Logstash. Logstash aggregates those logs, might filter a little bit, might add a few fields uh, depending on, on the specific needs of the services, and then sends the log information forward to Elasticsearch, which is used as a database for our logs. Kibana, finally, is the system that helps us query those logs, very similar that um, to what you would 
be using Google right now. So just entering any term would do a full text search on your logs. The key to solving the puzzle of bringing all those logs from various frameworks and services and various programming languages together is using one central logging format that is JSON. Docker provides a JSON logger that essentially puts uh, all logs into JSON files and Beats, in that case FileBeat, has the possibility to read all those logs generated into the JSON files from the Docker environment. So whenever any service starts up, FileBeats automatically picks up the logs and would forward those logs to Elasticsearch. So there is no more looking into log files, but all the logs are in one centralized cluster. What are a couple of the lessons that we have learned in the past from setting up a logging system this way. What's very important is to add lots of metadata and context to any log message that you're writing. If a log message just says user logged out, it's not worth anything unless you know which user was it. So add the IDs of any affected entities. If it's about creation of a pet, in our use case, you would want to add maybe some information of, about the pet. If it's about deletion of objects, at least note the ID of that object. Also important is to use pro proper log levels. You might want to log more information in a staging or test environment than you typically log in a production environment. Also make sure that you never log any sensitive information like personally identifiable information, secrets, keys, API keys, or any other data that you don't want anyone else to read. And finally, one very important thing that we have figured out is whenever you call third-party systems, log all details about that call. Log what data you sent, what data you received, include the headers since they contain valuable information if at a certain point in time those systems fail or your connection to those systems fail. The last step, the last thing that we figured out is how many logs do you really need? Right now we are averaging a 220 gigabytes of logs per day from the various system. This is a big challenge also for the environment where you want to store that data, uh, which brings us to the final slide. What do you do now that you have all those logs? Let me go into the detail of one of, of those logs that contains uh, a sample of one of our application logs. You will see, you see first of all, a log has a timestamp associated. It has a log level and a message. That's typical for mostly any logging system that you have. But then there are certain IDs like a payment ID, a tracker ID, subscription ID, and so on associated with that log because it makes sense for this logs for this type of log for other logs completely different fields might be there now that you've got a bunch of logs and many gigabytes of logs over time the question is what do you do next with those logs first and most important is to train your developers to understand how to use the logs use the logs on a daily basis to review any errors that you have in your system. We figured out that a daily check in the morning is the first thing that one person on the team does. We rotate this role so every day there's a different person checking the logs in the morning, figuring out whether there is any errors, any new or unknown errors, and creating tickets in our ticketing system. At the same time, whenever we deploy one of our systems, we also do an error log review afterwards to see if anything changed. In addition to application performance monitoring that should be part of any system anyways, we do additional monitoring and alerting based on our logs. Our logs tell us specific situations like a purchase being made uh, and user uh, being created in the system and so on. 
whenever we see certain thresholds per time exceeded or no payments within one hour, then we trigger an alert out of the logs. And with many logs, uh, log lifecycle management becomes an issue. Data retention in the database is something that people typically care for. Also for logs, the same holds true. Think about how long do I need the data? Elk stack or Elastic stack comes with a feature called lifecycle management that allows you to configure how long you want to keep the data. For example, if you configure your data to be there for 30 days, after 30 days, it would automatically be deleted and you can be sure that the size of the data doesn't grow indefinitely. So that was a quick introduction to how we do logging in uh, such a diverse field as GPS tracking. Thank you very much. Obviously we are hiring, uh, we are expanding our team, the company is growing. So we are looking for more people on our teams uh, bright minds like senior backend developers in Kotlin or Ruby, cloud engineers, software testers, hardware engineers, firmware engineers. So if you think this might be a great opportunity for you, drop us a line attractive.com jobs or write a short email to myself. Thank you very much.